my ultimate kitchen tool. Well, actually, let me introduce myself. My name is Heidi. I know a lot of you know me already, but there are some of you that don't. My name is Heidi Lajos, and I am a regenerative health practitioner and clinical iridologist. So what that means is that I work a lot with um, nutrition, helping people find alkaline nutrition so they can become more alkaline in their bodies. And I help people, people move through safe and en as enjoyable as possible detox protocols to help um, find better balance um, in the body as well as, uh, I don't know if stimulate is the right word, but regenerate, I guess is the best word, regenerate different glands and organs and tissues just so everybody can feel better in their body. Clinical iridology is actually the study of the iris. So there are reflex points in the eyes, kind of like if you are familiar with reflexology in the feet, the soles of the feet or acupuncture, it's very similar. There are reflex points in the iris. And so actually you can map the iris and view the inside of your body. So you can see specific glands, organs, tissues. You can see the state of your lymphatic system. It's really interesting and a brilliant um, tool to really see what's going on in the body without it being invasive. So that, those are my two things. And what I have found is when I'm working with clients, often the biggest challenge is, cool, Heidi, I love what you're doing. I want to you know, feel better in my body. I'm all on board for changing my diet and my lifestyle. But what do you expect me to eat? <laughs> what am I supposed to eat? And so through that, I have started developing. I've written, it's still in beta, still in draft mode, but my clients are using it. I have written a cookbook at this point, and I've done some in-person uh cooking classes and Beth in Virginia um, actually hosted one of them. And so and now this is my first time doing one live online with people from all over the, the world. So thank you all again for joining me um, and let's get started. Let me just see, that's why I'm here, diabetic and educating myself in nutrition. Excellent. Yep, but we got something from Santa Barbara, Lake Tahoe, some of my favorite places on the planet. Awesome, okay. And Brenda, yes, I will be sharing a, a few tidbits here and there about why I choose certain ingredients and then why I stay away from others. So there will be little um, tidbits of my regenerative health knowledge as we cook. All right, so my ultimate tool of choice when it comes to the kitchen, and Beth can, can vouch for this, is a blender. Yes, Beth has hers. <laughs> So the blender is my favorite kitchen tool. It is so versatile. You can do so many things. You can make desserts, you can make dressings, you can make soups, you can, I mean, literally, I don't know if there's anything you can't do with a blender. I personally am a big fan of the bullet blender. I have been swayed to start looking into a Vitamix and I have even used a food processor recently, but I still, I always come back to my little bullet blender. And for dressings, I find that a bullet blender is by far the best. It's the easiest cleanup. It does the job. It's quick and easy. So I hope you've all got a blender. That's gonna be key today. Got our recipes. Um, so I've got some measuring spoons. I also have a scale. So I don't, it seems like most of you are in the US, but you know, if there's any non-US people over outside of the US, we really like our scales because it's actually a lot easier and less cleanup. Um, so I have mine. <laughs> And then we have, I have some measuring spoons. I have my jars ready. I have three jars ready so I can just immediately put my dressings right into a jar. Um, and also these recipes, the dressing recipes are great because you can freeze them. So you could split them up into two jars. You can freeze half of it. Just leave some space at the top, you know, common knowledge. Just leave some safe space at the top if it's glass so it doesn't explode. Um, but yeah, these dressings are great because you can make them in batch and then use them later. And then I've got all my ingredients available at my hands and a nice little like, so I've actually got a trash can right next to me. That's a little kitchen cooking tip that I always have. I always have a trash can. I literally pull it up next to me so I'm not like trying to get across the kitchen. And I even have a little bowl I'd like to keep on the counter that I can put my scraps in and then I can just dump all that into the trash. So little cooking tips and let's get started. Hi, Justin, good to see you. Okay, so let's start with the hemp seed ranch. So the hemp seed ranch, we're gonna take our blender cup, we're gonna take our hemp seeds, and we're actually gonna just put in the hemp seeds first because I do find that it gets a little bit creamier if you let the hemp seeds soak just a bit. They don't need to soak overnight, they don't need to soak for hours, but so what we're gonna do is um, you can either grab your measuring cup, it's gonna be half a cup, or if you're like me, 
You got your scale, you can just go ahead, put your blender cup right on the scale, tear it. I have put the gram uh, amounts on my recipes because since I live in Europe, I do find that it's nice to have both cups and grams because I want this to be accessible for everybody. So I'm gonna measure out 70 grams, or if you're working with cups, it's gonna be half a cup. So hemp seeds are wonderful. They're actually a really high source of iron. And I know with plant-based diets, that's often a concern is I'm gonna become anemic. I'm not, I'm not gonna get my iron. I have to get my iron from animal meats, right? Like every, there's so much of that in our minds and so much of what we're told by doctors, get your iron from meat. Actually, there's a lot of plant-based sources and hemp seeds are one of them. So this is a really great addition for iron. It's high in vitamin E, so it's really great for your skin. Um, it's also great in um, the essential, the healthy fats, the omegas threes and sixes, which are also really good for your skin. Essential fatty acids are really important. They do a lot of functions in the body, not just skin, but also really important for our brain. So hemp seeds are brain food. Um, I think magnesium, they actually have quite zinc, which is great for your immune system. So hemp seeds um, pack a punch, low calorie, super delicious flavor, um, really healthy. So this is one of my favorite bases as a, uh, a, a salad dressing and also it's really creamy. So this is the closest thing that you'll get if you want to replace, obviously you're making a ranch, but like anything like a Thousand Island if you're into that, um, I don't know, other creamy dressings, Caesar. Uh, hemp seeds are a great way to make a creamy dressing. Some people like to use cashews, but cashews I don't recommend doing too often because it's a lot of fat. Cashews are delicious, they have health benefits, but you just wanna do them in small doses. So I find that hemp seeds are something you can turn to more regularly, especially for creamy dressings. Um, how many grams? 70 grams. And do I refrigerate my hemp seeds? Good question. You know what? I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I don't, but I will admit right here and now that I am not the best. I'm not the best at like washing my produce. Um, I don't refrigerate all the things that should be refrigerated. So I am guilty. I am just a human. Um, but yes, great question. I think if you have space in your fridge, refrigerating your hemp seeds is going to just, you know, keep them lasting longer. I don't think it's going to hurt them. Well, it won't hurt them at all. Okay, so we've got our hemp seeds. Now we're going to add our water and then we're just going to set this off to the side and we're going to move on to the next one. So we are doing a third cup of water, or if you're working on a scale, we're gonna do 80 milliliters. And hello, thank you for joining us, the newcomers. I didn't see exactly who popped in, but thank you for being here. We're working on the hemp seed ranch. So we, we just got started, and we just put our hemp seeds in, one, in your blender cup, and we're gonna add the water. We're gonna let them soak for a little bit. And I guess if you only have one blender cup before you add the water, or if, you might have to do it after, it might be too late. If you only have one blender cup, just do this in a cup because we do want to use the blender cup for the next recipe while we soak. I have two blender cups. Didn't think about the fact that some of you may only have one. So <laughs> we're gonna let our hemp seeds soak for a minute. So it's gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and tear my scale. This is why I love scales and I need to grab water. Okay. I don't condone using lots of plastic water bottles. I'm at my parents' house. They don't have filters and the top, what, tap water here is super chlorinated, so please don't judge me for using plastic. Um, but I'd rather use a little bit of plastic than drink a lot of chlorine. So, all right, you can judge me if you want, I suppose. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna change my unit to milliliters and we're doing 80 milliliters of water or one third cup. And there we go. Okay, and it's a lot less water than you think because if you put too much water, it won't be very creamy, it'll be super liquidy. So you can see it kind of just fills, I don't know what did you do? if you can see that, but it kind of just sits right above the hemp seed level. So we're just gonna put that off to the side and we're going to move on to the next one. So now we're gonna do, one of my favorites is the avocado cilantro lime. And we're gonna come back and finish the hemp seed ranch after. <clears throat> Why hold? Good question because if you don't use whole hemp seeds, it's disgusting. They have these like crunchy, hard little seeds on the outside of if it's not, if those aren't removed and they're really crunchy, it's not gonna be creamy, it's kind of weird, you taste it, it's kind of bitter. It's just, it's not an enjoyable, enjoyable experience. I had actually never seen unwhole hemp seeds sold at a health food store until I moved to France. And I bought them by accident one day because I didn't realize, and it was awful. I was like, what is going on? So I don't know what people use them for, um, 
but definitely just stick with whole. It's gonna be a much tastier experience. Okay, so now we're moving on to another delicious and healthy fat, avocado. Avocado is, I know it's not technically a superfood, but in my world, it totally is. Lots of essential fatty acids, high in protein, tons of vitamins and minerals, delicious, versatile. I mean, how many things can you make with avocado? You can make chocolate mousse, you can make guacamole, you can make avocado cilantro dressing, you can make brownies, you can do all sorts of stuff with this baby. So in the world of regenerative health, and Justin will know this, it is said that you should only eat a quarter of an avocado at a time because our livers actually cannot process that much fat all at the same time. So when we overload our body with fat, which is actually a lot easier to do, it's a lot less fat than you think it might be that we actually can process, um, our livers get really congested and taxed and it slows down the detoxification of other things in our bodies. I personally have a very hard time stopping at a quarter of an avocado. I have, however, gotten myself down to half an avocado at a time. I used to be at a whole avocado at a time, so I'm working on it. But um, so when we make this dressing, you know, I recommend, you know, eating it obviously on a salad. You're not going to use the whole thing. You're going to hopefully share. Um, so just so you know, little fun fact, you just, you know, strive for a quarter avocado at a time. I mean, guacamole, I kind of feel like if you're only eating it occasionally, there's no way you're going to only eat a quarter of an avocado. But fats, yeah, fun topic. So we're gonna open our avocado. Ta -da! And there's nothing more beautiful than a perfectly green avocado on the inside. I tell you, this is, when you get a brown avocado, it breaks my heart. When I cut it open and it's green, oh, Justin's got a nice green one. Yum. Let's see, I can totally eat a whole avocado every time. Yeah, my, I'm right with you. It's, I've gotten myself down to half. I've gotten myself down to half. All right, so we're gonna scoop out our whole avocado and we're gonna promise ourselves we're not gonna eat all of this dressing at the same time because we don't wanna congest our livers. And I'm gonna add that in. So while we're on the topic of fats, as you will notice, none of these dressings that we're doing today have oil in them. So concentrated oils, even healthy ones like olive oil and coconut oil, again, it's just, in small doses, occasionally, it's totally fine. But the way that I think a lot of us, myself included, have the habit of using oils with everything, cooking it up, mixing it in all sorts of stuff, throwing it in our salads, it's just, again, it's too much for the liver. Those concentrated oil molecules are very congesting and it's better just to get your fats from whole food ingredients. So instead of olive oil, eat some olives. You know, instead of avocado oil, use some avocado. Instead of coconut oil, add some coconut. It's not always that simple. I use coconut oil in my Thai cur coconut curry because that's the, you know, makes it delicious. So I'm not saying you can't ever have oil again, but again, it's just one of those things to be aware of as you're cooking and as you're, you know, thinking about, okay, what am I gonna add into this? Just have that little moment of like, hmm, can I replace this oil with something? Can I use less oil? You can actually saute pretty well with just water or like a tiny bit of oil and some water works surprisingly well. So I just wanna give you that info. All right, so moving on, we're going to actually get to cooking here, I promise. So we're gonna get our avocado. Now we're gonna add in our water. So this is three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters if you're working with a scale. We're just gonna go ahead, put that in. That's also the beauty of these recipes is they are all just Throw it all in, blend it up, and you're good to go. And feel free, um, it seems like you're already all on board, but feel free to ask any questions in the chat because I do have my little chat here next to me. Okay, so we've got our water. We're gonna juice our lime. If you have a little like, no, lemon press, that would be great right now. I don't have one. So I'm going to just hand juice my lime. And limes are a wonderful source of vitamin C. They're super alkalizing. They're delicious. Could we use lemon instead of lime? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you don't have limes, go ahead and use lemon. Um, I like 
limes and avocados, but actually lemons and avocados go really well together as well. But yeah, totally interchangeable if you don't have limes on hand. So while I'm squeezing this, um, a great thing to do, another little health tip, is in your water to add a little squeeze of fresh lemon or fresh lime because it actually makes the water more hydrating. So we need electrolytes for the water molecules to move through our cell membranes. Electrolytes are just minerals. Um, minerals exist in citrus like lemon and lime in high amounts. And so when we actually add a little bit of citrus into our water, that water can then move through our cellular membrane and hydrate us on a cellular level. So definitely a good thing to do, plus it's tastier. All right, so we've got our lime in. Now we're gonna do, this is kind of a weird measurement. I was trying to figure out how to measure cilantro for you all. I came up with tablespoons. So <laughs> if that doesn't make sense to you, just add whatever amount of cilantro you like. Um, Cilantro is definitely a hit or miss for people. I feel like you either love it or you hate it. Um, but what I meant by two tablespoons is I kind of like, because you don't need to chop this up, right? It's going in the blender. So I kind of just like took my little bunch and then I kind of like pushed it into the tablespoon and I was like, yeah, that's like a tablespoon. And then I did it twice. So that's kind of my measurement of cilantro for you all because I don't know how to measure herbs like this. But if you don't love cilantro, you can put less. If you love cilantro, you can put more. Cilantro is wonderful. It's actually a chelator, which means it helps draw out heavy metals from our body. So cilantro is a great thing to add into your, your, um, your recipes and your cooking. All right, so now we're gonna do garlic powder. I used to cook a lot, make a lot of dressings with raw garlic. Um, I found that the raw garlic was always very overpowering. And also garlic is very antibacterial, antimicrobial. It's actually medicinal when you think about it. When we eat too much garlic, our gut bacteria, uh, like the bad bacteria, will get used to it. It's kind of like, you know, antibacterial soaps and things are, you know, the bacteria are really smart and they will actually like become immune. So when our bodies are constantly exposed to these, like the very potent raw garlic, our bodies will do the same thing, right? Like the bacteria will become immune to garlic, whereas in the past, garlic and onion was used as medicine. You ate that and it would wipe everything out. But now we're eating it all the time. Hey, hey, hey. Every day. Can I just have you guys put yourselves on? Wait, I think I can mute you. Hold on. Do, do, do. Mute all. Okay. All right. So anyways, so getting back to the bacteria and the garlic, so this is why also I use garlic powder. It's a little bit, you know, it's obviously not as strong as fresh garlic, so I find that it's not going to be as harsh on my gut microbiome. Um, still gives that delicious flavor of garlic, and it's not gonna be overpowering, it's a lot easier to use. So one quarter of a teaspoon, so I've got my quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna stick it right in the jar and put that right in there. And we're going to do some, a quarter teaspoon heaping. Oh yeah, and that one was heaping as well. Because I found that half a teaspoon was too much garlic powder, but a quarter teaspoon was like not quite enough. So if you do like a nice heaping teaspoon, if you like garlic, that seemed to be just the right amount. Same with the salt. I found that it was like just over a quarter teaspoon that really made, you know, the salt levels hit the spot. Um, I like to use Himalayan pink salt because it's high in mineral content. Um, if you want to use Celtic sea salt, is an amazing salt that's also high in mineral content. Just be aware, I learned this last year that there are certain brands, um, I think, what is Moulton's? Morton's? Morton's. Morton's. Morton's and another like fancy brand, uh, or not fancy, um, standard brand of salt in the United States, sometimes add which ingredients into their salt. It's not just pure salt. It's actually cyanide. So just read the, your salt label and just make sure that it's salt because they use this cyanide and it's not, it doesn't say cyanide obviously because then no, no one would buy it. They use this other like, you know, chemical name for it. Um, but they put it in there as an anti-caking agent, totally unnecessary, don't wanna put that in your body. So Himalayan, pink salt, Celtic sea salt, any other kind of sea salt, as long as it's just salt. Redmond's pink salt is a great American pink salt which is high in minerals and very clean. Onion powder, so a quarter teaspoon of that. And cumin powder, an eighth of a teaspoon. Um, you could omit the cumin 
Some people don't love cumin, so if you don't like cumin, just leave it out. Um, if you like cumin, I recommend putting it in. It gives it kind of this guacamole taste. It's really good. Um, I don't have an eighth of a teaspoon, so I kind of just eyeball half of a quarter teaspoon measurement and put that in there. All right, so I have two blenders um, or two blades on my blender. There's like the four pronged kind of like higher up blade and then I have this like two pronged flatter blade. Uh, when I use herbs, I like to use the, the bigger four pronged blade. So we're gonna just blend that up. Um, I'm gonna mute myself so you guys don't get totally blown out by the sound. So one second. until the cilantro is as mixed as you like. So if you really want that cilantro really mixed in there, you don't want any leafy particles, blend it for a bit longer. Um, otherwise, I like when there's some leafy particles in there, so I left that. And as you will see, this sauce or dressing is a little bit thicker. I tried, I was experimenting, I added lots of water to see if I could get it thicker, It does, or thinner, sorry. It doesn't really get thinner and it just starts to water down the flavor. So the way to use this as a salad dressing is actually to toss this in a bigger bowl before you serve it. So this is gonna be less of a you know, pour across the top of your salad and try to eat it. This is gonna be more of a throw it in the big salad bowl, mix it all up, and then serve it from there and it'll give a nice, delicious, creamy coating. But the fact that it's thick like this, um, it makes it really wonderful for dipping carrot slices into. Um, cucumber slices is my favorite with this. So this is actually a really great dip you can put that's going to be a lot lighter than guacamole because as we said, we don't wanna, I'm not gonna tell you not to eat guacamole. It's one of my favorite things on the planet. But sometimes we might want something, you know, we we're gonna be considerate of our liver and this is a really great alternative that's just not as avocado heavy because of that water in there. So there we are, I'm adding it into my jar. And we've got our first dressing done. And as you can see, I'm talking your ears off, and so this is taking longer, but this is really fast to do. So we've got one dressing down, two to go. Um, and obviously if you have any spoons, you can give it a taste. And I'm gonna take a sip of water. Anybody have any questions about that one? I love my bullet. Yeah, Brenda, you and I, we're on the same page. <laughs> we're gonna get along just fine. Alrighty, so let's get back to the hemp seed ranch. So we've got our hemp seeds. They should have absorbed some of that water. So now it should be just a little bit creamier. I'm gonna go back to my hemp seed dressing. So we've already got our hemp seeds and our water. So now we are going to add in the lemon. And this I forgot to put on your supply list, but you don't need it. If you have one of those lemon pressers, this is gonna be great right here. If you don't, this is one of my favorite kitchen hacks because I find the lemons always have seeds in them. And so I like to use one of these little, can you see that, little strainers. It's tiny, I mean, it's like the smaller than my, the palm of my hand because it fits right on top and then I can juice the lemon through it and it catches all the seeds. I mean, this is a game changer for me when I don't have the lemon press. What can you use if you don't have a bullet blender? You could use a different kind of blender. You could use a food processor. You could use your hands, <laughs> like a, a, a whisk or a fork or a spoon. It's not gonna come out as creamy. Unfortunately, the best way to do these recipes um, is going to be with some sort of mechanical thing. So food processor, any kind of blender or a bullet blender. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze my lemon Again, super alkalizing, super cleansing, lemon. Um, I'm obsessed, I 
feel like I put lemon in everything. Um, lemon in your water, once again, great way to hydrate on a cellular level. Mm -hmm. oh, I love the smell of fresh squeezed lemon. Great way to start your day. If any of you are wake up and drink coffee people, I will implore you to please just before you have your coffee, have some lemon water for me. If you can't do it for yourself, do it for me because it will change your world. <laughs> it is so much better on your um, stomach lining. It's high. It's a great way just to hydrate first thing in the morning because we actually do get quite dehydrated over the night. So to wake up and hydrate is a great thing to do for yourself. Um, if you want to go one step farther, have some lemon water, then have some juicy fruit, whatever's in season. Right now it's oranges and citrus in the summer, watermelons or other melons in the fall. Get your hands on some grapes, red grapes preferably if you can find seeded red grapes. But lemon water, some juicy fruit, and then if you really need a coffee, maybe have some coffee or have a smoothie or a smoothie bowl and then maybe have a coffee or wait and have lunch and then have a coffee or just wait till tomorrow, you know, have coffee the next day. And if you say that every day, you will suddenly, it'll be weeks and you haven't had a coffee and you're going to feel better. Um, you want cucumber, pineapple, lemon, and ginger for fiber. It tastes really good. Ooh, that sounds like a great way to start the day. That sounds delightful. Um, sometimes you put too much ginger in it. Yeah, totally. Got to be careful with that ginger. I put ginger in my smoothies sometimes, and I have to be super careful because it quickly gets too gingery. Okay, so we've got the lemon, and if you had one of those pressers, you probably finished ages ago. We're gonna do half a teaspoon of garlic powder. So back to the garlic powder instead of fresh garlic. I just got sick of having all my stuff be too garlicky and burning my stomach and burning everybody else's stomach. And I was like, we're going with the garlic powder. Okay, we're gonna do half a teaspoon of onion powder. Cause we know ranch is super onion powdery. And uh, we've got half a teaspoon of our good salt again. One whole lemon, yes, a whole lemon gets juiced into here. You had me doubting myself. I just double checked the recipe. Okay. And we're gonna add in our herbs. So herbs, I find, you know, whatever you got your hands on, whatever you like, um, you don't need a ton. And here's another tip. So if you want your, your ranch dressing to stay white, right? And then just have green specks in it, you're gonna blend it at this stage and then you're gonna hand chop your herbs and then you're gonna stir them in. And that will keep your hemp, or sorry, your ranch dressing looking like a traditional ranch dressing. If you don't care and you're lazy like I am and you'd rather just throw in the herbs and mix it up, it's gonna taste exactly the same, it's just gonna turn green. So if you have children or whoever, you know, if you just are attached to it looking white, you're gonna blend at this stage, hand chop your herbs, and then stir them in afterwards, and that will keep it white. I'm not that picky about the color, I just want things to be quick and easy. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna blend yet, I'm gonna throw in my herbs. Half a lemon, but I don't always measure, oh. So, oh, I see. Okay, so I have, I'm in France, there's no chives right now. Chives grow in the summer. In France, you can't get anything. It's super hard to get stuff that's not in season. So I have no chives, so I'm gonna forego that. If you have chives, please add them in, or if you have dried chives, you can add those in. Um, I also don't have fresh dill, which breaks my heart because I love fresh dill. Um, but again, impossible to find. So I am going to add in some dried dill because I do have that. And I'm gonna do about half a teaspoon, I think, of dried dill. I might wanna add more to that after. Um, I do, however, have fresh parsley and fresh cilantro. So I'm going to add in a little bit of each. And you can add in the stems of both cilantro and parsley. Actually, the stems are even more flavorful than the leaves, and so when you're doing blended recipes, go ahead and throw the stems in. And I'm gonna add in some parsley here. Two, 
Oh, I feel, wonder if I should have had like some background music. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Probably would have been distracting. Okay, so I've got all of my ingredients in. I'm just gonna quickly rinse off my blender blade. And again, I will mute you to protect your ears. You can blend as long as you like. If you want it to be super, super, super creamy and all of those leaves and you know herbs blended up real nice, you can blend longer. Um, you can also add more water. So mine is pretty thick, I think, because I added quite a lot of herbs. If yours is thick too, um, you can add in some more water and make it thin. You know, add it, get it to the consistency that you like. I'm gonna leave mine thick. Oh, this is another thing you should all know: the avocado dressing will stay the same thickness. It'll just stay as it is. The hemp seeds, so the hemp dressing and the tahini dressing will thicken in the fridge. So when you wanna reuse it, just, you know, either just add in some water and give it a good shake in the jar, or you can put it back in the blender, add in some water. All you need to do is add some water, it'll thin right out and it tastes just as good as it did before. So I'm just gonna leave this thick because I'm not gonna eat this tonight and it's gonna get thick again anyway overnight. But if you're eating this right now and you want it thinner, then I would go ahead and do that. Another handy tool, which I left in another room in the house and I'm not gonna go get right now, is a um, one of those like pastry spatula things because you get everything out of the blender. Those are my favorite tools because it just gets every last drop and that makes my heart sing because I hate wasting food, even if it's just like the stuff that's getting scraped on the blender on the blender cup so a little pastry spatula thing is another one of my go-to kitchen tools okay so you can see the hemp seed dressing makes less about half the amount of the avocado dressing and your avocado dressing obviously is going to depend on how big your avocado is okay so Dressing number two down, as you can see, mine is green because I blended my herbs in it. But again, if you wanted it to be white, it's totally possible. Just hand chop your herbs. Nice, Beth, that looks good. Lovely. Yeah, please feel free. If you're cooking along with me, I would love to hold up your, your creations. Okay, last but not least, we are going to do the curry tahini. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse out my blender cup. And I'm going to give it a dry. All right. So the last main ingredient that we're using is tahini. Tahini is every plant-based eater's best friend. So high in calcium, um, it's really good for platelet formation in the blood. I mean, this is everybody's best friend, not just for plant-based eaters. Everybody should be getting down on tahini and sesame seeds because it is so wonderful. Um, but it's so packed. I mean, these little tiny seeds are so high in minerals that it's just a great nutrition source for the body. Plus, it's delicious. I mean, maybe it's an acquired taste. We're often not just eating tahini on its own. I do now. Um, but I guess maybe it's more of an acquired, you know, 
more to mix into things. I mean, it's a main ingredient in hummus, and obviously you can make all sorts of delicious dressings. A very standard uh, tahini lemon dressing is really good. Just doing a bit of tahini, some lemon juice, maybe some garlic powder, salt, water. That's a delicious dressing as well. But today we're gonna get a little bit fancier, a little bit more exotic, and we are going to do a curry version. So let me pull that open. Let me switch to the other page. Okay, so we are doing a third cup of tahini, or if you have a scale, 80 grams. So tahini is one of my favorite things not to use a measuring cup for because it gets so messy. Um, so let's see. And I have learned um, from people who have connections with Israel, who are kind of the, you know, some of the, the, connoisse the Middle East is the big connoisseurs of tahini. Uh, apparently the quality of tahini makes a huge difference in the taste of it. So if you can get your hands on some true Middle Eastern tahini, um, apparently it tastes a whole lot better. I can't get that in France. Well, I haven't found it yet anyway. So I'm just using some standard white person tahini, but um, it's still pretty damn good and it still has all of the nutrition. So um, you should do that. Okay, so we're gonna do 80 grams or if you're using measuring cups, it's one third of a cup. So I'm changing my unit to grams and we're gonna put that right in there. And I learned this week, uh, my mom, so I'm staying with her right now, she steamed up some fresh artichokes and I, you know, standard artichoke dipping is usually like mayonnaise or butter or something like that. And because I am plant-based right now, um, I was like, hmm, what am I gonna dip my artichoke leaves and my artichoke cart in? And I had this curry tahini dressing in the fridge and I was like, let's see if that goes. And it went super well together. So surprisingly, curry and artichoke pair very well. Who knew? I did not know, but it was a fun discovery. Okay, so we've got our tahini. We're gonna juice yet another lemon. So if you have a lemon press, you are very lucky today because we've got putting that thing to use. I keep saying I'm gonna buy it and then every time I go to the store where you can buy kitchen supplies, I'm always like, what was that thing I said I wanted to get? And I get home and I'm like, ah, it was the lemon press. So. So one of the things I just wanna share, you like to spoon tahini on its own. Yes, Mayel, yet another reason why I love you. <laughs> I started doing that like a year, a little over a year ago, and I had to stop myself. I was like, okay, this is too, too much tahini, but um, yeah, I, I feel like it's same. It's so satisfying. Okay, so we're doing a whole lemon. So all of these, all three of these recipes are very alkaline. Um, so what that means is that it's on the alkaline side of the pH scale. So humans, we are an alkaline species. Our blood is a 7.4 pH, which is on the slightly alkaline scale. And so we do our bodies a lot of good when we can feed our bodies alkaline nutrition. Because when we are constantly putting acidic foods in our body, um, our body has to work really hard to protect our blood pH because if our blood pH moves, we die. So um, when we're constantly eating acidic foods, our body will do all sorts of things like create, you know, hold on to more fat cells, produce cholesterol, leach calcium, because all of these things will create chemical, um, chemical reactions to actually bring down the acidity to make it more alkaline so that our blood can rest at a 7.4 pH. So when we feed our body alkaline nutrition, our body can do, does have to do a lot less work and it can just focus on nourishing the cells. And when our body's in an alkaline state, our body's very cool, our cells are kind of like spread out, they're hydrated, um, and it's just a much healthier state of being. Um, when our body's in an acidic state, uh, acidity, if you think about it, it's hot, it's inflammatory, cells get dehydrated, they start to clump together. Um, the cells don't function as well as they should. They don't destroy themselves when they're supposed to. And actually blood can't really get into the cells, the tissues, because when the cells are clumped together, the blood has a hard time moving through that. And blood is what nourishes our body. So 
just a little regenerative. That is actually the, the basis of regenerative health um, philosophy is this alkaline nutrition. So um, all three of these dressings are alkaline. So when you eat them with a salad or other fresh fruits and veg, it's a fully alkaline meal, which is really great. Okay, so we got our lemon juice, we got our tahini, we're gonna now add our water. So it's either half a cup of water or 120 milliliters. And again, please feel free to ask any questions, even if it's about you know the health stuff I'm sharing, feel free to ask questions in the chat and I will answer them. Or if you have questions about the recipes, obviously, happy to answer. Okay, so now we've got our water. And once again, I, I do have a goal to make some dressing recipes without garlic powder, but I just find that it really is that missing link, you know, it just gives it that delicious garlic flavor. Um, okay, so we're doing half, or sorry, a quarter teaspoon. Yes, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. What would be good to add to the dressings if you have gout? Hmm. Um, I do not know. I don't know if there's anything in particular that is good for gout, but I will say an alkaline diet is going to be amazing for gout because gout is actually over acidity. Gout is um, uric acid that has accumulated in your toes. Um, and uric acid has accumulated because there's too much acid, there's too much uric acid going into the body. Uric acid is most often, um, you know, gets into our body from eating animal proteins, animal meat. So definitely focusing on an alkaline diet is going to do wonders for gout. Um, doing you know gentle inversions will be good. Once you get everything flowing, you really wanna support the kidney. So kidney herbs is gonna be a really important thing for you because what's happening is that your kidneys are unable to eliminate the extra acids that are in your body and that's why they're accumulating due to gravity down in your toes. So I would definitely, um, work on the kidneys. I don't think there's anything in a dressing, unfortunately, that's gonna help. This is a, a kind of a deeper issue. If you're gonna run out of fresh garlic, how much? You ran out of the garlic powder. I would add, honestly, like the tiniest piece of a fresh garlic clove. Start from there, and then if you need to add more, add more. But like, start really small, because honestly, garlic, raw garlic, it just overpowers so fast. So I would add like, like the end corner of a, of a clove. All right, so, Curry powder, one and a half teaspoons. So I'm just looking for my teaspoons. So I got my half here. So this is an Indian style curry powder, mild. One, where's my teaspoon? That was my half and here's my one. So we got one and a half teaspoons of curry powder. Mm, delish. And we're going to add maple syrup, which is kind of a fun ingredient. So something that I've learned in my dressing explorations is adding a little bit of honey or maple syrup oftentimes adds that like that missing touch when you're like, you know, this dressing's pretty good, but I don't know, it's missing something. It's usually sweet. It's usually missing that sweet. You want the the sour, the sweet, and the salty. And then if you're doing creamy, like the, the fatty, so you have the avocado, the tahini, the hemp seeds, those are like the four taste that you want to hit that's going to create a really delicious dressing. So sweet, salty, sour, and fatty. So just a little bit, you don't need a ton of sweet. Um, I love maple syrup. I also love honey, but we're, today we're going to use maple syrup. So just one teaspoon. So you can see it's really not that much. Just a little bit. Hits the spot. And then we're going to do fresh ginger. So again, like the coriander or I live in France, English people say coriander, like the cilantro. Um, kind of a weird thing to have a measurement on. So I said half an inch. <laughs> so if you could just imagine, like, you know, you have your piece of ginger, you're gonna take like half an inch of that ginger. Um, if you work in metric, it's 13 millimeters. So it's, I mean, eyeball it. If you love ginger, err on the side of bigger. If you're a little bit like, oh, this ginger is a little bit sensitive for me, air on the side is smaller. This is another one of my favorite kitchen tricks. So to get the skin off the ginger, which isn't totally necessary if you're using organic and it's been, you know, cleaned and scrubbed, 
But if it's not organic, I would definitely take the skin off. And an easy way to do that, obviously you can use a knife and just chop off, but then you lose a lot of the ginger. Um, but if you take a spoon and you can just scrape, I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera, but hold on, let me get my little scraps bowl. Um, can you see what I'm doing? I don't know if you guys can see this. You're scraping the skin off the ginger. And it's super easy really quick and you economize a lot of the ginger. You're not losing nearly as much as if you were just to go around with a knife. So you can see, doo -doo -doo -doo, I'm already done. So this is one of my favorite kitchen tricks is the using a spoon to get off ginger skin. Um, I do, even though this is getting blended, I tend to chop my ginger just into a bit smaller pieces because I find sometimes a, a bigger chunk will get stuck in the blade. So if you have a really high powered blender, you probably don't have to worry about that. The one I'm using um, here is not high powered at all. All right, so we've got our ginger, we've got our salt. We got half a teaspoon of our good salt. And if you wanna get a little bit fancier, you can, I'm not gonna do it because I already have cumin in the avocado stuff and I have now, we all now have three dressings. So um, you can add a little bit of cumin in here, which would be really nice, especially if you're looking for something a little bit even deeper and richer and spicier. You could also add some turmeric powder or fresh turmeric actually would be really nice as well. So I'm just gonna stick with what we've got written down here. Um, because there's no, herbs in this dressing, I'm gonna go ahead and use my flat blade. So if you have different options on your blender, you can use a flat blade. And I'm going to mute. So you can see we started probably actually cooking about 10 after the hour and we're about 53 after the hour. So we spent 40 minutes, but I have been talking your ears off. So <laughs> as you can see, this is a really quick and easy way to make dressings that are fresh, full of delicious and healthy ingredients that are, that are going to nourish your body. And it's so easy and it's literally a one like jar, you know, cleanup kind of thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in. Again, if you find that you want this dressing to be even thicker next time, or even now you could add more tahini or next time use a little bit less water and you can have it even thicker. I like this one a little bit runnier because this is one when it's at this consistency, you really can just drizzle it on top of your salad at the table and it's fine. And I think I saw Jess waving around her, her blender somewhere. Which salt did you say had something in it? Um, I believe it was Morton's. It was in somebody's cabinet. Um, it was like a brand that is very typical in the United States. It's like one of the you know most common name brands that we all grew up with. I can't remember, I think it was Morton's, or if it's not, it's something like Morton's salt. And I can't remember either. I If you follow me, actually, this is a, a good, good time for a plug. Please follow me on Instagram <laughs> at sprout.kist, or at, yeah, not .com, at sprout.kist. Um, that is my Instagram. I have a lot of reels about health knowledge. I also share in my post a lot of recipes and just meal ideas and food ideas. And if you go into my reels, um, you will see I did make a reel about the salt and I share the, like I show the, the, the bottle of the salt, the jar of the salt. So you can see the brand in there. And then also I tell you what it, like the ingredient is that you need to look out for. So great plug. Thank you, Brenda, for that great and seamless opportunity to tell you all about my Instagram account. Um, so yeah, so that is, I don't remember the name of the saw, I'm sorry, but it is on my Instagram. All right, so we have, let's see, anybody else has been cooking along, I would love to see your three beautiful dressings all done. Oh, look at that, Beth, beautiful, yes, yes. Oh my God, Jess, beautiful. 
Yeah, Justin, yay! I can't see the name of the person showing right now, but I can't see, oh my God, everybody, I love it. Sam, and let's see, let's see if I, I'm gonna come over here because I wanna see your name so I can shout you out. Oh, Danny, and Jess, and Sam, Oh, is there an, Oh, you guys are awesome. So, as I said, you can freeze these. Um, the avocado one, I might not freeze. Maybe this one I would, you know, try to eat in the next few days. That is the one, you know, downside, downside. When you're eating real food without preservatives, they don't last as long. That's just how it goes. But you're not eating preservatives. So that's really good because we don't want to preserve our bodies, right? We want to nourish our bodies. So one of the reasons why I personally always make my salad dressings is because standard salad dressings that you'll buy, even like Annie's, like, you know, the healthy, good ones, they're usually full of like sunflower oil, canola oil, safflower oil, like all of these cheap oils that have been, especially if they're in a plastic bottle, They've been in there for so long, they're probably rancid. Um, and again, our bodies don't love oil, concentrated oil like that. There's often sugars in there as well, like cane sugar and other sugars, and everything's just not fresh. So when you're adding in like fresh greens, I mean, this is like, this is feeding your body, right? And it's so easy. So thank you all so much for joining me today because dressings is one of my passions because I just find it so easy and such a great way to fill your body with nutrition. Aw, thank you. The Regenerative Health Cookbook. Delicious. Aw, thanks guys. The cookbook, I know Justin, you've been asking me. <laughs> it is on my list of things to get done this summer is to finally hone in, edit, and get that cookbook ready to publish. Um, so Justin, you are, um, I have a list of names of people who are I know are interested and you're the first one on there. So as soon as it's ready, I will get that to you. And thank you so much for, you know, keeping following up on it because it, it helps me feel like it's worth it to put in all that work. So I, I appreciate you, Justin, for, for asking and, and being interested. Okay, oh, gonna make those dressing for Waylon's lunchbox to go with his carrots. Yay, Maya, let me know what he thinks. So that is all I had for you all today. Um, if you have any last questions, I would love to answer them. And I actually have a question for you all. So um, this was my first time doing a online virtual cooking class. This was really fun for me. It seems like most of you had a good time. So I hope this was fun for you. And for anybody catching the replay, I hope you really enjoyed this. Um, I would love to know for the next class, because I would love to do this monthly, and I do think I'm going to charge a small fee. I'm thinking around $10 or $15 um, just to, you know, compensate my time and my energy and all the work that I do for the PDFs. I hope that feels fair. Um, I really want it to be accessible and not feel like a big burden, but just a little something to, you know, we all got to make a living. So I'm thinking something really cheap and accessible that I hope isn't, you know, feels like a good exchange. And I would love to know if you want to do like a dessert, like a raw dessert, a healthy dessert next class, or maybe something savory, like a meal or like a raw lasagna, or I don't know. Is there anything in particular that you all that are here, what you would love to learn? I would love to get your feedback. You can either shout it out or you can put it in the chat. Um, or if you want to think on it and you want to email me, um, but I would love to get some feedback because I'm tossing around a few ideas, but um, yeah, let's see. All of those would be great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking maybe some like raw fudgy brownies and like I have this really good recipe to make Reese's peanut butter cups that like actually taste like a real Reese's peanut butter cup, but it's all healthy ingredients and super easy to make. Um, healthy desserts would be great to give to kids. You would like to learn how to make a vegan lasagna. Okay, cool. I'm excited to learn, use about the hemp seed ranch. Yes, you have so many hemp seeds you need to use. I know, it's so funny, certain ingredients end up in our cabinets. Okay, so vegan lasagna. I, I have a really excellent raw vegan lasagna. Um, I don't know if I, I don't do a cooked one yet, but I could probably figure that out. But we'd probably do a raw one to begin with. Vegan lasagna would be awesome. Okay. So maybe the next two, May and June, I'll figure out which one goes which, but we'll do a desserts one and we'll do a vegan lasagna one. Thank you so much for your feedback. I really appreciate that. Okay, gummy snack. I tried but not been successful. Ooh, interesting, a gummy snack. I've never tried a gummy snack. Okay, I'll think about it. It probably won't be anytime soon, but I will think about that. Gotta go. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you so much for being here. And you, my desserts always taste like, yeah, the desserts are good. Oh my gosh, the creamy macadamia nut cheesecake one, divine. But the caramel sauce, oh, you gotta do that one eventually. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. I will give you all back your day. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. It really means the world to me to have you all here live. And it was super fun. And thanks for being my guinea pigs for my first cooking class. So I really appreciate that. And enjoy your dressings and let me know, send feedback, let your friends know, share my Instagram, share my recipes, you know, let people know I exist because then I can help more people and give them more recipes. And that's my whole mission is just to get everybody eating healthier. So the more you share, the more I can share and I, you know, everybody wins. All right. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate that. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Thanks again for being here. Love you all so much. Have a great day.